Hello, and in this video we're going to look at how we can get parameters out of a URL into our Power Apps. First we're going to take a look at breakdown of what a URL looks like with a parameter. Then we're going to look at the param function and how we can get those parameters out of the URL into our app. Then we're going to go through two examples. The first one we're going to change the on start screen based on the parameters. And the second one we're going to send an ID in and we're going to put that into one of our forms. So here's a URL that I've pulled straight from my browser. Let's break it down and see where those parameters are. So here we have the full URL, as we can see it on the screen there. Now the first part of the URL is the address. So we've got apps.powerapps.com forward slash play. That's the URL address of the website itself. Now the first thing that we look for when we're looking for parameters is a question mark. This is essentially the start of the parameters. So the URL has been in play and now we're looking at the start of the parameters. And here we have our first parameter. So we've got tenant ID, which is the parameter name, equals, and then we've got a long good, which is the value of the parameter. Now, if we wanted to put multiple parameters in, we would use an ampersand. So then following on from the ampersand, we would have a second parameter. Here we've got source equals portal. So let's have a look at what all those different pieces are. We've got our URL to start. Then we've got a question mark in green, which is the start of our parameters. We've got a parameter name equals, a parameter value, an ampersand, a parameter two name, and our parameter two value. So question mark is the start of our parameters. The parameter name equals the parameter value, and an ampersand is the next parameter. And we can add as many parameters as we want into the URL. Let's go and see how we can get those into our app. So here we have the Microsoft documentation for the launch and param functions. I'll post the uh, URL to this in the description of the video. And here we have a very simplistic use of this parameter function. So here we've got a simple label that just says this is my parameter and I've got an empty label here. Now we're simply going to use the param function. And now we have to tell it what is the name of our parameter. And this can be whatever we want. The same as with variables, we can give it a name. So we're going to call this um, parameter text. So it's not going to populate at the moment. And we can't do this in the app itself. We have to run the app to see it working. So just to see and understand how that works, what we're also going to do is in here, we are going to set a uh, variable called parameter variable to param and the same name as the one we used before parameter text okay let's just double check that that is the same name as the one we fit in here so we've got the param function and we're just telling it what is the name of the parameter in the url to look for and this one is going to set that parameter to a variable. And then what we shall do is we shall set this label, to actually show that variable, which will be blank initially. So let's publish the app, see how it works. So here is our app up and ready to go. So this is my parameter, but it's empty at the moment. And that's because as we discussed before, we can look through the parameters in the URL. There's our question mark. We've got tenant ID equals a GUID, but we don't have our parameter. So we need to put an ampersand on the end and we named our parameter parameter text and then equals this is my value so let's hit return reload and here we go we can see my value has entered into the box where i used the param function now let's click this button and we've also just set it to our variable which has now appeared in the box simple let's go and move on to some examples We've got a really simple app here with two screens. Screen one, which is our home screen. Screen two, which is our help screen. So we're going to take advantage of the start screen within our app. And we're going to pull the parameter down and use a switch statement to decide which screen starts. So we're going to do a switch using our param, which we're going to call screen. And the first match is going to be one. Now parameters always come in in uh, text. You can convert them to numbers, but text is always the result that you'll get first. So make sure you put it in as uh, text and that will navigate to screen one and then two will navigate to screen two. Okay, let's publish our app, check it out. Okay, so we've loaded our app up and we've come straight to screen one. Now again, 
we haven't put our parameter into our URL yet. So here's the start of our parameters. We've got tenant ID equals the GUID. We're going to add an ampersand at the end, and then we're going to say screen equals one, which is obviously going to go to the first screen. And then we're going to jump up here and we're going to change the screen to two, which went to our screen two. So perfect, exactly what we were after. Now let's go do something a little bit more complex and send an ID to a form. So this is a slightly more complex uh, example. But what we've got here is an app that shows an employee ID, employee name, employee mail, and employee web. This is not a form, these are not galleries, they're just simply labels. We're gonna throw an item ID at the app. We're gonna look up that item from a data source, which is our demo data here, and we're gonna load it into the app. So we need to wire a couple of things up. First, we need to add our data. Let's find the SharePoint connector. Let's connect this up to our demo site, employee data. So we're going to go over to our app. We're going to go to our app on start. And we are going to set a new variable, which is going to be our employee record and we're going to look up from our employee data sample where the ID equals the parameter which we're going to call item ID. Now as we said before we our parameters always come in as text and obviously ID is a number so we have to use the value function which will convert the text into a number and then we will set the employee record to that record one more so there we go so when our app runs it's going to take the parameter item id turn it into a number and then it's going to look up for employee sample data against that id and store it as employee record so all we need to do now is we just need to wire up the rest of our text here so we're going to use the Absand employee record dot first name and employee record dot last name for our employee mail absand employee record dot mail email and for the employee web and employee record dot web. And lastly, our employee, all important employee ID, ampersand employee record dot ID. Um, just to prove that the ID that came through the parameter is in fact the ID that we are seeing within the app. Now, we can obviously type in the URL, use the item ID plus one, but we're going to be smarter. So in here, what I've done is used some custom formatting in this column to essentially just turn it into a URL that gives us our um, app URL plus item ID as our parameter on the end and then adds the ID on the end. I won't go into that in this video, but I will in another video. I'll also link to the documentation on how to do that in the comments. So now what we should be able to do is take a look at this ID. So we've got ID number one. Let's publish our app, click the link and see what happens. So let's have a look who we got here, Alicia Tomkovic. Let's open that app with item ID 1. We do indeed have employee ID 1, Alicia Tomkovic, and all of her details. And we can see here we've got our parameter item ID equals 1. Now I can manually change this and we'll get a different uh, employee, or I can go back to my list here and click on a different one and I'll get a completely different uh, employee ID. Thanks for watching another video. Please remember to subscribe to keep up to date with all my latest videos.